theorem in Max is something that's proven to be always true. It always works. That's the theorem. It's no more than that. Okay. Uh, so that's the theorem part. So something is always true about a binomial. Now we need to go back and find out what a binomial is. I don't know what a binomial is. No. Who was your math teacher last year? Okay. No one knows what a binomial is. Okay. Bi. Try. So bi would be from two to two. Nomials. We know. We might know what a polynomial is. Maybe. Maybe. Remember what a polynomial is? Okay, an example of a polynomial, you, you know what a polynomial means, you don't know it. That's a, this is a polynomial. Oh, that's a polynomial. More than one term, poly, more than one. Polygon, more than one side. Polynomial, more than one term. Nomial stands for the term. You know, uh, Oh, I can't remember that word. Anyway, yeah, so if this is a poly, what's a bi? It's only got two terms. That's a lot easier. Boom. Not so hard now. Two term theorem about these two terms, or about just two terms. And the theorem is all about. What happens when two terms are raised to different powers? So, for example, it's the power of 5, the power of 10. And there is always a slow way of doing that. Because we can, we can square that, can't we? We should have that knowledge maybe from last year, being able to square that. Let's look at squaring that. Let's start off with that. So, x, well, let's go right to the very start, actually to the power of zero first. Let's try that. And then we'll do power of one, which is just x plus one, we know that one. x plus one to the power of two, squaring it, we'll get to that in a second. Let's, first of all, get rid of that pen, it's rubbish. What's x plus one to the power of zero? One, okay, sweet. That's a good start. That's just x plus one. x plus one squared, can anyone do it fast? Okay, it's x plus 1 times x plus 1, isn't it? So x times x gives x squared. x times 1 gives x. That's the x down to it. 1, yeah, you're getting there. 1 times x is also x, and 1 times 1 is 1. Put these two like terms together. And you get x squared, there's two x's there plus 1. Yep. Okay, not too bad so far. You know where it's going next? Cute. Okay. So in order to cube this, perhaps we can use the answer for the squared one and multiply it again by x plus one, and that'll be it three times one. Okay, so let's take that answer. X squared plus two x plus one. And multiply it by x plus one. Okay. Uh, x squared times this and this is uh, x cubed plus x squared, yeah? And the 2x times x, 2x times x, that's 2x squared, yeah? 2x times the 1 is plus 2x. And 1 times both of them is just going to be x plus 1 at the end. So that's it times by x, that's it times by 2x, and that's it times by 1. So you get all of those terms, yeah? Perhaps we can combine and simplify a little bit. It's definitely just an x cubed plus 3x squared plus another 3x plus 1. Cool. All right, let's do one more. Perhaps you can do one more and see if you get the answer. Off you go. Or are we just taking down the notes, take it down as far as here, and then get started on the next one? So we have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, and now we must times again by x plus 1. 
In other words, x plus 1 to the power of 4. That's a jerky. I think you have it, let me know and we'll check to see if you're right. Uh, make sure to simplify it. So you can type it in the chat if you are online. That'll be pretty difficult. But... Uh, yes, no, almost. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, do the next line then. Uh, no, there's something wrong. Your x squared term is wrong. Uh, your x term is wrong. That's correct. Try and do the next line. And stop there. That's correct. Try to do the next line. Yep. Nice. Try to do one more, and then we'll stop then. Let's get to x to 5. Yeah, so you multiply it in an easy way. Well, you can multiply this line. This line now needs to be multiplied by x. Each term multiplied by x. So the first one would be x cubed times x, which would be x to the power of 4 on this. Then x, that one times x, that one times x, that one times x. And then times them all by 1, so it'll just be all the same as. Yeah, and then have Ah, okay. So you, you see any pattern there? Could you predict the next one without actually doing it? Yes, same for you. So if you, do, you see a pattern, you do the next one without multiplying it out. Yeah. 
So it's going to be exit four. Sorry, Wait, sir. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I've done the. All right. Predict the next line based on the previous lines. So you have a couple of them there in the drawers without actually multiplying them. You see any facts? So I'm going to start to write out over here in black. One. X squared plus 2x plus 1. X cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. X4 plus 4x squared. That's this line. 4x cubed, right? Plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. And that's that line. If you've done it correctly, you should get this. The next line, x5 plus 5x4 plus 10x3 plus 10x2 plus 5x plus 1. What is the next line? Without multiply. Searching for patterns within. I just don't get this. The tens? Yeah. I say you got it, but you don't know the next one? I just don't. I know, don't know what those would be on the next one. And the next one, yeah. Okay, so hopefully most of us are in the realm of this one and are and nearly have got this one and this one, or know how to get them. But now look, let's look at the patterns. That's all about pattern recognition. So I'll kind of get rid of this. We kind of know what they are. Ready? And let's look at some patterns. So this, remember, was x plus 1 to the power of 0, x plus 1 to the power of 1, x plus 1 to the power of 2. So a binomial to a power. That's what we're looking at. A two-term thing to a different power. So out of these, we're going to form, hopefully, a theorem of some sort. Okay. Predictions for the next line? Anyone want to give a stab at some of the numbers? Yeah, so this is our prediction. I'll put it in blue. X, 1, uh, 6, and that's going to be X to the 6. Good start. Laura, you got something for the next term? Uh, that's looking like it follows that pattern, yeah, because you got to power one, power two, power three, power four, power five, and goes two, three, four. Okay. Looks good. Maybe we can jump to the end, because that's a bit easier. Plus one. Yes, plus one. Fantastic. Well done, everybody. Plus. Why is it one? Yeah, it's one times one times one times one, six times, that last term. What do you think it would be if it was two here? Two to the power of six would end up at the end, wouldn't it? It's kind of looking like that would happen. Okay, maybe we could use that in a general theorem of some sort. All right, uh, the second last term is probably pretty easy as well, is it? Six x. Yeah. Okay. Now, many terms are going to sit in here. Three. Why? Well, the first one has one term, to the power of zero. The second one, two terms, it's a binomial, to the power of one. Third term is a trinomial, but it's to the power of two. Quadnomial, if you want. So it's one, one more than the power. So there's only it's to the power of six, so there must be three more. You're right, there's going to be, because the previous one had six terms. The next one's going to have seven terms. They're all going to be positive because there's no negatives to change any signs. So we've got plus something, plus something, plus something, plus that. We could probably think about the x powers, can't we? x6, x5, the next one would be x4, the next one would be x3, and the next one would be x squared. Okay, I'll get rid of my underlines. Now we just have to fill in the numbers. Julian, have a step. Is it 20? Which one? Where is the 4? Why? Um, I just think it's 20. You just think it's 20? Okay. 
15? Why 15? Because four Oh, you're seeing four plus six gives this ten? Yeah. Where did this ten come from then? Um, oh, the other four working backwards. <laughs> Not possible. Hmm. Well, you're looking at what, what are those called? The numbers in front of the x's, they're called coefficients. coefficients. Yeah, they're coefficients. So you're looking at the coefficients. Let's add the coefficients in each line just for laws. <laughs> One. What's the addition of the two coefficients here? One plus one, two. One plus two plus one. Huh. We're predicting 64. That means they all have to add to 64. These are probably going to be quite large numbers. We only got rid of 14. So we have to find 50. In the middle of all that. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to the 4 plus 6 gives 10. Why would 4 plus 6 give the 10 when we're thinking about that multiplication? Think about x cubed. x cubed, this term, when it's multiplied by 1, stays as 4x cubed. Yeah? This term, when it's multiplied by x, gives me the 6x cubed, isn't it? So this one when it was multiplied by the 1 on the next round, so they're both multiplied by the opposite thing to give back to the cube. So perhaps that, that's where the 10 comes from. That is where the 10 would come from, yeah? And that would work the same way here for the squares, would it? x squared and this x, when this is multiplied by the 1, you get the 6, and then when this is multiplied by the x, you get the 10. So it is a combination of those numbers. Okay, but what happens when we got this many numbers? It's still going to be a combination, isn't it? 15 and 10. When this is multiplied by the 1, you're going to get 5 of them. When this is multiplied by the x, you're going to get an extra 10. x to the 4s, which are combined to give you total x to the 4, which would be 15. Yes. Who said 15? Someone said 15. See, no? No one said 15. I said 15. I heard 15. Okay. Yes, Julian. The next one is 20. For similar reasons. And uh, this is probably pretty hard to see because the plus is a bit weird. Okay. Why it's, it is going to be 20 and then 15, like Julian said. Because the x cubed is going to be multiplied by 1. So there's 10. And then this is going to be multiplied by x. So there's another 10. That gives me the 20. And then 10, 5, and then 5 and 1 give 6. So what's the next line? X7. X7, yes. Plus. Plus. Twenty-one. Twenty-one X5s. Plus. 35. X sixes? Oh, X fours, sir. Plus. Plus these two. These two now. 35 again. Plus. These two. 21 again. Plus 7 again. Well, are these all going to total to when we do total? We hope. 128. So there must be something here. Does anyone recognize the numbers? What's that called? That type of number system? Anyone seen that before? Uh, these are square numbers, yeah. What about the numbers contained within this kind of pyramid looking thing? This kind of triangle looking thing? It is something, it's some, some mathematician triangle. Uh, no. I was the question. What's the name of this number system? 
So it's one, adjust the coefficients. One, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, one, five. It starts with P. Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. This is Pascal's triangle. You're going to need this in your note. So you might as well take the Pascal's triangle. Why do you need this in your notes? Well, it's a fast way of multiplying out a binomial, because you know the powers. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Hopefully yours is a bit neater than mine. You can split up those numbers better. But that is Pascal's triangle. Good. So we have a binomial theorem. Not quite done, but we've done an example of one. Then we see any issues here where this example might be slightly simple. Simple. Yes. What's the initial? The initial binomial is quite simple looking x plus 1. Not exactly the hardest two term thing you can think of. You can probably think of something maybe with a fraction there. Or with what happens if it's x plus y? It's also a binomial. You have a plus b written over there. Two variables. Binomial. What happens if it's a plus 2b? Could we crack that code? No? Uh, we can try. Okay. The first thing is recognition. And it says up there, any expression in the form something plus something is to the power of something is called a binomial. A binomial is something plus something. The power of something is called power binomial. And it doesn't have to be so, it doesn't have to be just singular coefficients. So it could be 3a plus 2b to the power of Six. Could be like that. Well, any expression in that form, something goes two terms. Okay. Let's look at that a plus b one and what we've done so far to create just a simple a plus b binomial. A plus b to the power of four without multiplying it out. Trying to apply what we have here to this. So, what's going to be the first term in this? So it's a plus b to the power 4. So we're kind of looking at this fourth line here. It's going to be similar to this. It's going to be the same system going through it. What's going to be the first term? A to the power of 4. Because, well, it was x here, so a is replaced it. So it's just a to the power of 4, just by looking at our patterns. Okay. Uh, oh, this is not, not as obvious now, the second term. Perhaps, is the 4 still applicable? B to the power of 4 would be next. Mm. Maybe the last term. Maybe do the last term. Because when we were on the sixth line, it was 1 to the power of 6, wasn't it? Remember I said if it was 2, it would be 2 to the power of 6, the last term. 
I think the last term is going to be b to the power of 4, because it's going to be that same b repeated by itself, it'll have nothing to do with the a's. Same as the way this one only equals times itself, the last one. Okay, so we're going to end up with a plus b to the power of 4, because there's no negatives, so they're all going to be plus as well. All right. How many terms do we think? Five, I think, because well, this one had five. One, two, three, four, five. So this one had five. So we're going to try and squeeze in, or there might make more of a gap here. A plus something, plus something, plus something, plus B is the power of four. Now, is there any coefficients, numbers, multiplying the A or B, which would affect, oops, this number system, one, four, six, four, one. Is there anything to double them, half them, triple them? No, I don't think so. You can kind of half, you can test it out if you want. You could multiply A, B times, or A plus B times A plus B, which end up is A squared plus two AB. Plus b squared. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If you were to do it, that's what you get. If you don't, maybe that doesn't come straight away. We'll have a little look. That times that. a times a gives a squared. a times b gives ab. b times a, then once I do the other one, gives ab as well, plus b squared. So there's two of these things. Right. So these twos and threes and fours and sixes aren't created by the coefficients really, it's created by the number of these there are, you know, when you multiply it out. So there is nothing to affect. Once it's just singular whole ones, it's going to form perfect Pascal's triangle. So I can put in the four, six, four. So I will. So I know the next one is going to be four or something, six or something, and four or something. So all we're doing is looking at the pattern still. A is kind of like x, isn't it? In my world. A is the power of four, we wrote it. The next one was x to the power of three. Do we think it's going to be a to the power of three? No. no. Will it, will it be a to the power of anything? It will be b. Let's look at our example. a squared, 2ab, b squared. It's going to have a's and b's in it, I think. Anyone want to have a guess how many a's and how many b's? 4 a's, 3 b's? Possible. Maybe we need to do another, maybe if we had the cubed one, we might see what it looks like. We'll do another one of these. Just give it a Pascal, so presume we have it taken down. So in order to find A plus B cubed, I'll take the previous answer, this one, and multiply it by A plus B. A plus B times A squared plus 2AB plus B squared, yeah? So that was what we got. So just do it one more time. I get my A cubed. All right, now this is right. A times 2AB. Is that 2A squared B? Yeah. yeah. A times B squared is AB squared. I should have put it over here, it's more room, but anyway. Uh, now I multiply by B. B times A squared is, well, let's go A squared B again, so A squared times B. 2 times A, B times this. 2 A, B squared. 2 A, B squared, yeah. And then B times B cubed, or B squared is B cubed, okay. Now I've scrambled that into the corner there. Let's try and tidy it up. A cubed is definitely there, so we are, are uh, no, A4 is the next one. A cubed is definitely there. How many A squared B's are there? Two A squared B's. Two A squared B's. I didn't know one here. 
Three. I. Shut. Three A squared B. All right, that's the, I've done that and that and that. That's all gone. So we need to do A B squared, and there's three of them as well. Yeah, and that's gone and that's gone. And we got a B cubed at the end. So notice the pattern of the powers of the A. A to the power of three, A to the power of two, A to the power of one, A to the power of zero. Gone. So A to the power of four. Four A cubed B. Well, we come back to the B's. A squared A. Descending powers of A. B's powers of B. Ascending. Yes, yeah, so there's b to the power of zero here, nothing. b to the one, two, three. So, nothing, one, b squared, b cubed, b four. Yeah, that's it. How would we prove that? We well, could just multiply it out and see if we get it. Let's have a little go. I'm going to multiply this line by a, a plus b again. Um, and we see if we get it. Whew, this is a lot of this is, you can see the whole course is going to test your algebra skills. It comes up everywhere. This is, I suppose this is, this is primarily algebra, but it's going to come into everything. It'll come into statistics, probability, algebra. It's going to be throughout the whole thing. I don't know if you had. Who did you have last year? Miss Robinson? Mr. Gibson? No. Mr. David? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a times them all is going to be A. 4 plus 3. You don't need to take this down. I'll just do it. Uh, plus A times that is 3A squared, B squared. A times the last one is A B cubed. B times them all. A cubed B plus 3A squared B squared. And it's times that times this plus 3A B cubed plus B times that so B to the 4. Tidy it up. A to the 4 is gone. It's here. B to the 4 is gone. It's there. Oh, we need to cross that out. Uh, there's 3A B A cubed B. So there should be another one. And there is, it's here, yeah. Yeah, that's those two gone to form four. There should be six of these, and there's three of them here, three of them here. That is the six, very good, they're gone. And then we got these to make the four, and it does work. And it will continue to work. Yeah. And that's the whole base of the binomial theorem. We're trying to get quicker and quicker of getting to this line when given this. So we're trying to speed up that shortcut method. We're, we're going to be armed with Pascal's triangle, one, four, six, four, one. We're going to be armed with these powers. The first number goes straight to the first uh, variable, goes straight to the power that's on the outside here, a to the four, and then it just drops one each term. And the opposite happens with b. You can really start at the end and it drops one, or you just increase it by one. As one goes up, the other comes down. And that's the patterns that perhaps you're noticing. I can't remember what questions come from what we see. No, we're not going to do factorial just yet. Okay, that's same and all that. Same stuff. Now, what happens when it's different coefficients? Can we apply what we know? So, we have a plus b cubed here. So can we do 2x plus 3 cubed? One thing I know for sure is it's not going to be 1, 3, 3, 1 anymore. Because there's 2s and 3s in the middle of it. The last term is going to be 3 cubed, isn't it? OK, give it a go. Be, this is like a reference. You know a and b, 2x plus 3. See, can you crack the code? Those people online, hopefully, you can see that. Look at it, 2x plus 3 cubed without actually cubing it out. 
using what we know. Can we do it? And then I'll show you how to do it. Thank you. The first one, do you try the second one? What is B in this case? It is 3. It's not at the top line, it's a reference, and it's a substitution question. A is now 2x, and B is now 3. Replace. Substitute. So then A is 2x, and B is 3. Nobody has yet. Sir, I cannot see the words. It's a little blurry. Cool. That was a good microphone. Is the sound on? Otherwise, I just won't be able to check. It is uh, expand 2x plus 3 cubed. We'll try and do it uh, not using uh, just multiplication. Try and do it using the pattern and stuff we, we just formed. <laughs> Anyone think they have it? Not quite. You know how many terms it's going to be, don't you? Yeah. Many. Four. Oh, okay, many good. Three. Oh, okay, that's a bad start. Four. You see? That looks correct. Yes, try the second one. Use the top line and just place A with 2x and B with 3. I think your x squared term is wrong. Yes. Yeah, 3 times A squared and 3 times 3 times 12. 12 times nothing is 18. Your second term is wrong. Others are right, just check your second. The same way we got the 3 here, which came from x squared plus 2x squared. It's 3x squared. So it's 
it's going to be there's going to be an a squared b or some other a squared two a squared b. Yeah, this. So what you need to do is every time you see an a, it's two x. So you write the next one like three times two x squared times three. And b is three. Two x squared is four x squared. Multiply by three, multiply by three. That's your term. It's going to be some. Uh -huh. uh, it's pretty close. Uh, your 27x squared is the other two are three years. So just your 27 I don't know. Good, sir. Oh, wait, I got where that came from. <laughs> but it's wrong. That's wrong. A squared. You do the squared first. So two x squared is gonna be four x squared. Four x squared times three will be twelve x squared. Times another three is gonna be thirty-six x squared. So thirty-six x squared is the second one. Thirty-nine. <laughs> I just added more notes. <laughs> Wait, what? Don't have I'll start. I'll start you off on this one. Okay. All right. So you have your reference one, which is we know is right because we've done it, and they have given it to you in the question. Uh, what was it? Three a b squared. I'm gonna get rid of everything. Just clear this all up. Okay. Uh, plus b cubed. What it's telling us is use this to do 2x plus 3. Okay. So in other words, this is a, this is b. Okay? So 2x cubed is the first term instead of a cubed. The second term is 3 times 2x squared times 3, a squared times b. And we'll get to the other terms in a second. Let's just do these first. 2x cubed. What's well, going to be x cubed anyway? What's 2 cubed? 8. That's the first term. Plus, bit mass, order of operations, do the squared first. So that's going to be 4x squared times 3, times 3, 12. <laughs> it is, times 3 again, yes, 36 x squared. Okay, and apply the same thing for the next ones. Off you go. If you haven't finished it, finish it. If you have finished it, do the second one. If you finish the second one, I'll check it. Let me just check the answer first to make sure. I know what it is. Just explain it. Yes. Anyone else has a second one? No. You want to be picking that up, I presume? Right. No, he's not. So this would be 2x then to the power of nothing. Or sorry, 1, not nothing. And it's going to be 3 squared here. It's the next one. And the last one then is just going to be 3 cubed instead of d cubed. So the next term, do this first. 3 squared, 9. 9 times 2, 18. 18 times 3, 54. 54 x's. Last term, 3 cubed, 27. Like that. Yeah. Okay, we we'll leave it there for today. Brains are good Friday last class of the day. When we pick it up tomorrow morning with more binomials. Is it morning? I hope it's morning. Year twelve. Oh no, it's last class again tomorrow. Fantastic. Okay, so we see you last class. There's no homework. Uh, we just start nice and gentle, and we will get stuck into more tomorrow. Okay. Bye. I don't understand.